Here we go again. Manchester United may have to wait a number of weeks before sporting Lisbon boss Ruben Amorim takes charge as their new manager, reports claim. Sporting all but confirmed United will poach Amorim after announcing the Premier League giants are willing to pay his 8.3 millions of pounds, which around to 10 millions of euros release clause. The Lisbon giants did not confirm whether they had accepted the Red Devils' advances in a letter to the Portuguese Stock Exchange, but reports suggested it's only a matter of time until a deal is finalized. According to the Mail, however, talks have hit a snag regarding the Portuguese tactician's notice period, which will last several weeks. United are happy to meet the 39-year-old head coach's clause, but are currently negotiating when he can start. Amorim may now not be in the dugout when the Premier League giants host Chelsea on Sunday. In fact, the sporting boss may not take charge until Man United visit Ipswich on November 24th. Interim boss Ruud van Nistelrooy will be in charge against Leicester in the Carabao Cup last 16 on Wednesday at Old Trafford. Van Nistelrooy may also be in the dugout for the game with Chelsea, the Europa League encounter at home against Payok, and the Premier League clash with the Foxes on November 10th at Old Trafford. Amorim may not assume his new position until after the international break, meaning club chief Sir Jim Ratcliffe may not get his man for another four weeks. Sporting issued the following statement. Manchester United has expressed an interest in hiring coach Ruben Amorim, with the board of directors of Sporting referring to the terms and conditions set out in the employment contract in force between the company and the coach, specifically the respective termination clause and the amount of 10 million euros. Manchester United has expressed an interest in paying Sporting the amount of the aforementioned clause. Amarim broke his silence on the likelihood of taking over at Old Trafford during a press conference on Monday. He said, I was already expecting this question about Man United, and obviously I'm not going to talk about the future, because otherwise I'll always have to comment. I'm very proud to be sporting coach, that's all. United sacked Eric Ten Hag after the club's worst ever start in the Premier League era. On the other hand, Victor Gyokares is expected to join Manchester United, following his manager Ruben Amarim, who is reportedly on the verge of taking over at Old Trafford. The Swedish striker has been in sensational form for sporting CP, netting 16 goals in just 15 games across all competitions this season. Football insider Fabrizio Romano reports that Amarim, currently preparing to exit Sporting, is keen to bring his top striker with him to Manchester United. Gyokares's impressive goal-scoring record would be a huge boost for United, who are looking to strengthen their squad and improve their performance in the Premier League. If finalized, this double move would bring new energy and tactical prowess to Manchester United, with a skilled manager and a high-scoring striker ready to make an impact at the club. In other news, Euro, Shaw, Mount. Manchester United injury news and return dates ahead of Leicester match. Ruud van Nistelrooy will take interim charge of Manchester United for the first time when they host Leicester City in the Carabao Cup fourth round at Old Trafford this evening. Van Nistelrooy was placed in caretaker charge on Monday after the United hierarchy made the decision to sack Eric Ten Hag. The club is trying to appoint Ruben Amorim as the Dutchman's permanent successor. As far as the visit of the Foxes is concerned, Van Nistelrooy is poised to select his matchday squad from the same pool of players that were available for Sunday's 2-1 defeat to West Ham United at the London Stadium. None of those who currently feature on the injury list are expected to return meaning Van Nistelrooy will not be blessed with a catalogue of options. With that said, here is all the very latest on the injury front ahead of tonight's game at Old Trafford. The first one is Nusser Mazraoui. He injured a knee. Mazraoui was withdrawn in the closing stages of the defeat to West Ham after a coming together with Hammers match winner Jared Bowen. The severity of the injury has not been disclosed, meaning it remains to be seen if he will make the squad tonight or not. His potential return date is unknown. Lenny Yoro. He injured a fractured metatarsal. United issued an update on Yoro last week, confirming he had started training outside on the grass. He has been sidelined since fracturing his metatarsal in the opening game of United's preseason tour of the United States in July. United anticipated he would be sidelined for around three months after undergoing surgery at the start of August. He was walking without crutches as soon as early September and has been working hard in the gym at Carrington. He will not be rushed and his competitive debut for the club is not imminent. He expected to come back in November. 
Next one is Harry Maguire. He injured a foot. Maguire has been absent since being forced off against Aston Villa prior to the international break. He limped off the field, requiring support from members of the United medical team, and was replaced by Matthijs De Ligt just before halftime. Maguire posted on social media that he would be out for a few weeks, something former United boss Ten Hag confirmed a few days later. He expected to come back in November. Next one is Luke Shaw. He injured a calf. There is no light at the end of Shaw's injury tunnel, it seems. After originally being tipped to return after the first international break of the season in September and then after the second earlier this month, his absence is still ongoing. Speaking after the defeat to West Ham, Ten Hag, former United manager, confirmed Shaw had suffered a setback and that his recovery is not going in the direction United would have hoped for. He said, the process is not going as we expected. That's the truth. The setback, if you want to call it like this. We want also to do it very careful. When he is now dropping again, we want to be very careful. We know his past. We have to do this right because we want him to be available, because he will have a big impact on our performances and also on our levels. We can't have him playing for some games and then drop out again. So, we will do it very carefully. His possible return date is unknown. Next one is Tyrell Malaysia. He injured a knee. Malaysia, who joined United in July 2022, has been training with the first team in recent weeks offering encouragement that his return might not be all that far away. He last played for United on the final day of the 2022-23 Premier League season. In August, former United manager Ten Hag said that the defender was moving in the right direction, suggesting he could be back at some point in October. He is not that far off, but he is now in a progress situation. At a relatively short notice, he can again return into team training and then into team performance in games. I think it would be possible to be available again in two months. However, United's final game of October is, of course, this evening, and he is not expected to be involved. His possible return date is unknown. Next one is Kabi Mainu. He injured muscle. Mainu suffered a muscle injury in the closing stages of United's 0-0 draw with Villa and has missed each of the last three matches. Former United manager Ten Hag, speaking at his pre-Brentford press conference almost two weeks ago, said he expected the academy graduate to be unavailable for a couple of weeks, meaning he could be back available as soon as this weekend for the visit of Chelsea. More information could be shared on his recovery ahead of the weekend. He expected to come back in November 3rd when United vs Chelsea at Old Trafford. Next one is Mason Mount. He injured Knock. Mount, who played just 20 times for United last season because of various injury issues, has missed the last five matches after being forced off with a head injury that required stitches against Tottenham Hotspur on September 29th. Speaking ahead of last week's 1-1 draw with Fenerbahce, former United manager Ten Hag said that, I think a bit longer to wait for Mount. That's what we expected. I think he will be back soon. His potential return date is unknown. Next one is Toby Collier. His injury is unknown. Explaining why Jack Fletcher had been included in the squad for the win over Brentford earlier this month, Ten Hag revealed Collier was another midfielder who had been added to the injury list. However, he stopped short of offering any detail on the nature or extent of his injury. His potential return date is unknown. Last one is Antony. He a injured sprained ankle. Antony was forced off on a stretcher in the closing stages of United's stalemate with Fenerbahce, just 16 minutes after being introduced from the bench. He left the stadium requiring crutches, sporting a protective boot on his left leg. Former United manager Ten Hag, speaking post-match, said it was too early to reveal a diagnosis. However, it has since been confirmed he had suffered an ankle sprain. His potential return date is unknown. On the other side, sporting boss Ruben Amarim says he has not yet made a decision about his future after Manchester United expressed an interest in appointing him manager. Sporting confirmed earlier on Tuesday that United had made an approach and are willing to pay Amarim's 10 million euros release clause. Speaking after his side's 3-1 Portuguese League Cup quarter-final win against National on Tuesday evening, Amarim told Sport TV, Nothing is decided yet. I don't know if it's the farewell game or not. Then, in a news conference he added, There is interest from Manchester United. There is the payment of a contract term, and when I have something more solid, I will come here and tell my position. 
because it will be my choice. While I don't have everything decided, for one side or the other, I can't tell much more. Amorim added that he will be at training on Wednesday to prepare for Friday's league game against Estrella da Amadora. Asked if he will be in the dugout at Old Trafford for Manchester United's game against Chelsea on Sunday, Amorim said, I will be here. But when pressed, added, I don't know. Manchester City boss Pep Guardiola says United would be getting a high-level coach in Amorim. All I can talk about is the experience of playing twice against Ruben's sporting Lisbon team, one or two seasons ago, and the pressure was really, really good, the Spaniard told a news conference. And look this season, he is unbeaten and winning all the games in the Portuguese League and the Champions League. They have the same points as us, so a high manager. What's going to happen I don't know, because what happened here in my experience doesn't mean it works for the other ones. The manager, the team, the club, the structures, the physios, the doctors, the players, it's many things. Sporting fans speaking to BBC Sport outside the stadium before the national game were sad about Amarim's reported departure, with some questioning the decision to move to Old Trafford. According to Fabrizio Romano, a reliable source for transfer news, United has reached out to both Sporting CP, Amarim's current club, and the manager's representatives to discuss a possible move. Sources indicate that United is in the early stages of negotiations to bring Amarim to Old Trafford. United's representatives are working with Sporting CP and Amarim's camp to discuss the terms of his release from the Portuguese club. An important factor in this negotiation is Amarim's release clause, a specific fee set by Sporting that United would need to pay to allow the manager to leave his current contract. The talks reflect United's interest in giving the team a fresh approach under new leadership. Ruben Amarim, known for his impressive work at Sporting CP, has gained a reputation for his ability to develop young talent and implement a modern, exciting style of play. United's management is exploring if he would be the right fit for the club's ambitions. At just 39 years old, Amarim has quickly risen in European football, bringing success to Sporting Club and establishing himself as one of the most promising young managers. His tactical approach focuses on dynamic, attacking football, which could align well with United's objectives. Bringing him in would potentially introduce a fresh philosophy and drive the team towards more consistent performances. Negotiations are ongoing, with both clubs aiming to understand if an agreement can be reached. For United, choosing the right manager is crucial for building a long-term, successful project. With Amarim now a key target, fans and analysts alike are watching closely to see if he will indeed become the new face of United's journey forward. In other news, Ruud van Nistelrooy appointed Manchester United interim manager after Eric Ten Hag's dismissal. In a major shakeup, Manchester United has decided to part ways with Eric Ten Hag, their head coach, after a challenging start to the season. Just hours after his departure, former United striker Ruud van Nistelrooy has been appointed as the interim manager to lead the club for the time being. Ruud van Nistelrooy, known for his exceptional goal-scoring ability during his time at Old Trafford, is stepping into the manager's role with high hopes from fans and club staff alike. Nistelrooy enjoyed a successful spell as a player for United from 2001 to 2006, scoring 150 goals in 219 games and becoming a fan favorite. His connection to the club and understanding of its culture make him a natural choice for the interim position. The decision to remove Eric Ten Hag follows a difficult period for United, with inconsistent results, rising pressure from fans, and challenging performances in the Premier League and European competitions. United executives felt a new approach was necessary to bring stability and positive momentum back to the club. What's next for Manchester United? Van Nistelrooy's appointment as interim manager gives United time to search for a permanent head coach. The club has not provided a specific timeline for when a new permanent manager will be chosen, but they are actively seeking a candidate who can lead Manchester United to long-term success. As the team prepares to face the challenges ahead, fans are hopeful that Van Nistelrooy's presence will inspire positive results and bring a new level of determination to the players. Meanwhile, Bruno Fernandes thanks Eric Ten Hag after Manchester United dismissal. United recently made the tough decision to part ways with their head coach, Eric Ten Hag. 
The club has had a challenging season, and this decision came as a response to the team's recent poor performances. As the news broke, United's captain, Bruno Fernandes, shared a heartfelt message thanking Ten Hag for his time and support at the club. Fernandes expressed his gratitude, saying, Thanks for everything, boss. I appreciate the trust and the moments we shared together. I wish you all the best. He acknowledged that while recent results weren't up to expectations, he hoped that fans would remember the positive impact Ten Hag had on Manchester United. The Portuguese midfielder highlighted that despite the struggles in the last few games, Ten Hag's influence on the team shouldn't be overlooked. He said, Even knowing the last period hasn't been great from all of us, I hope you fans can keep with you the good things Eric has done for our club. Ten Hag, who joined Manchester United with high expectations, worked hard to improve the squad and implement his style of play. Although his time was cut short, Fernandez's message reminds fans of the dedication Ten Hag showed during his tenure. Fernandez's words reflect both respect and appreciation, showing how much the players valued Ten Hag's efforts. While the focus now shifts to finding a new manager, this message from the captain encourages everyone to remember the positive aspects of Ten Hag's time at United. On the other side, Manchester United fans and players alike felt the impact of Eric Ten Hag's departure as the club announced his exit yesterday. Among those who expressed their gratitude were two young stars, Kobe Mainu and Alejandro Garnacho, who thanked Ten Hag for his support and the opportunities he provided them. Mainu, a rising talent at United, shared his appreciation for the former manager's faith in him. Thank you for your trust and belief in me and for giving me the opportunity to play for my boyhood club he said, making it clear that Ten Hag had played a big role in his journey at United. I wish you all the best for the future, Mainu concluded, showing respect and gratitude for the coach who believed in his potential. While Alejandro Garnacho, another promising young player who flourished under Ten Hag's guidance, also had kind words for the departing manager. Thank you for everything, boss, Garnacho wrote. I will always be grateful to you for giving me the opportunity and the confidence to play for this club. Acknowledging that things did not go as planned, Garnacho still focused on the positive moments they shared, saying, I will remember the good times we had together, and I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you very much, Eric. However, despite a challenging period for Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag leaves a legacy of nurturing young talent and building trust with players. His time at Old Trafford may not have produced the results fans hoped for, but his dedication to developing players like Mainu and Garnacho will remain a key part of his impact on the club. With these emotional messages from Mainu and Garnacho, it's clear that Ten Hag left a lasting impression on the young talents who got their chances under his leadership. As Manchester United heads into a new chapter, Fans and players alike will watch with hope for what the future holds for these young stars and for Eric Ten Hag.